But then look at verse number 13. It says, thine eyes shall not pity him, but thou shalt put away the guilt of innocent blood from Israel that it may go well with thee. One of the things that I've noticed, uh, one of the things I like, or I, I've spent some time watching, I don't watch like a lot of TV shows and things like that, but I'll watch documentaries. And one of the things that's fascinated me is, uh, is just kind of like crime documentaries and things like that. And one of the things I've noticed, and this is why you always got to be careful with what you just allow to put in front of your eyes anyways. One of the things I've noticed with these, with a lot of these shows that will focus in on, um, you know, just whether it be like a, an FBI files type of thing where they're looking back and forensically looking at crime scenes and stuff like that. I, almost every single time, I would say probably not even almost every single time what they do is they take the victims and they put them in this pitiful light and it's just always oh this poor person that poor person but do you know how often that i've seen it's like almost every single time they're doing something like committing adultery or being involved in some extremely wicked behavior and then they end up dying and i look at this i see the judgment of god there now, I'm not saying that whoever the person was that took their life was just in doing so, but I also don't see all the pity that's going to be going toward the adulteress who's cheating on her husband and this guy that she ends up going off with ends up killing her. I don't have any pity for her. But you got to watch out for the, the world that's going to want to brainwash you and think, oh, this poor woman. Oh, we're so, you know, we ought to shed all these tears. That it's so sad that she lost her life. Well, she shouldn't have been a whore. She shouldn't have been committing adultery. And this is what the Bible says. You know what? Don't pity that guy. Don't pity the murderer that gets put to death. Don't pity the adulteress that gets put to death. Don't pity anybody that, that God has this judgment upon when, it, when the execution is carried out. Because you start pitying them, and then what's going to happen is you're not going to want to impose the sentence. You're going you're gonna to want to change God's law into saying, no, we shouldn't do that. And that's, you know, all these Christians, these believers, real believers today, they freak out when people like me or people like you will say, I believe that sodomite should be put to death. I believe it should be against the law and homosexuals should be executed. I believe that ought to be a law today. They'll freak out over that. Oh no, where's your grace? Where's your love? Where's God's grace and God's love in his law then? You tell me. Are you going to be more just than God? I, show me in the New Testament. Show me anywhere in the Bible where God just says, Nope, those laws, I know that that was the sentence that I gave for human beings that engage in this type of behavior, but I've changed my mind on that now. I actually think I was a little bit too harsh, and now I'm going to start having pity for these people, even though I said don't have pity on them when I gave you the law. What in the world? What is wrong with people? It's because they've been brainwashed into having pity. Now we go out and try to win souls all day long. And that's great. But you know what? The law is still the law and still needs to be carried out. I mean, if someone could get saved before they get put to death, great. But that doesn't mean that we should just not have any laws then. Well, let's just, let's just not have a death penalty then because we all we care about is getting somebody saved. Nope. I actually care about my kids and your kids and other people more than that. The law still needs to be carried out. And it's funny that people just want to pick and choose because they, they won't say there should be no laws. Because that is insane. But they fail to see the, the, their logical problem when they just start picking and choosing, well, which laws should you think we should, we should enforce? Because a lot of these same believers, and I mean believers, I'm not talking about people who just call themselves Christian. Believers 
will say, yeah, a pedophile should be put to death, or yeah, a first-degree murderer should be put, I believe in a death penalty, but they don't want to say it's for the sodomites. Well, who are you to make that decision then? And show me from scripture where you get that idea from at all, because you're not going to be able to find that. It's ridiculous.